Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive game dev tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to teach you how to use a really neat tool which allows you to take a higher colour image from elsewhere and import it into the Mega Drive with little effort. What you're seeing on your screen right now is a mock-up I did of the Bloodstained title screen and I created this using the tool I'm going to cover today. I'm not especially active on X or Twitter as it is formerly known but I'll include a link to my account in the video description if you want to follow me. Normally once every couple of weeks I post something that a small thing that's probably not worth doing a video about that's quite interesting anyway and on my Patreon I also uh, post more regular updates of stuff I'm doing just a sneak preview of what I'm up to so if you're interested in that then you can subscribe to my Patreon and as usual you'll find the source code for all the tutorials on that. Okay with the intro over let's get on with the lesson. Okay so let's begin with that tool I spoke about. For our example today I'm going to take this high colour image from Sonic Adventure. I actually started playing this for the very first time this week. I never had a Dreamcast or a GameCube or anything else I could play it on. I'm playing the PC version, the modded version to make it look more like the Dreamcast. I think it's uh, with this in a, a beachside first level and so on and, and really kind of happy summery blue skies tone. I think it's a good game to kick off the late spring early summer. The first step in our conversion is to change the resolution to change the side of the sprite so do a control A and then go here to sprite sites. Now you want to keep the ratio locked so keep this ticked unless you're happy with kind of stretching the image or distorting it. So I'm going to change the width to 320 and with the ratio locked that gives us a height of 240 which as I'm, I think will be fine for PAL machines but since we're using NTSC we're going to change that to 224 so I think it looks really nice here. Press the C button so this is different from the we're changing the canvas size rather than the um, sprite size when we press C so it's not going to stretch it it's just going to cut off the top or the bottom so if I change that to 224 it should cut off a little bit from the bottom a little bit from the top and so that should fit our screen just fine now. Fortunately, in order to use this within the tool I'm about to teach you how to use, we don't have to change the color to index or RGB, it doesn't really matter, so I'm going to keep it RGB for now. Simply save it as a PNG and move on. The tool we're going to be using today is called Tiled Palette Quantization by a person by the name of Rildan. It's purely online so you don't have to download anything and I'll include a link in the video description. The first step will be click on choose file and navigate to the file we just created, the Reside Sonic Adventure file or whatever file you want to use. Next up we're going to need to change a few options so the tile width and height is fine, leave those both at 8. Now palettes refers to the number of separate palettes we're going to be using in our image so with the Mega Drive this can be any from 1 to 4. So uh, because we're going to be just displaying one image and nothing else, it's not going to be a level, it's just going to be like a title screen, let's choose all four palettes. So that would be all four palettes of 16 colours. So of course the colours per palette will need to be 16. For the Mega Drive, bits per channel will be 3. If you're using other systems, for example the Super Nintendo, I think you can choose 5. For the Game Gear, I think it's 4 and I think for the Master System is 2. For the option below, fractions per pixels, as I understand it, this determines how long it takes to generate the image. The higher this number, the longer it takes, but apparently the higher the quality will be. But I've experimented everything from 0.1 up to I think it's 9.1 is the highest. And I did notice too much difference. For this um, example today, I'm going to stick to 0.1 a low number but feel free to change this to higher and higher numbers like 3.1, 4.15, whatever up to 9.1 and just see how much it makes a difference to your image. For the options below that the color index zero behavior if you want to do like a, a sprite or maybe a foreground then choose the transparent color where it's got the pink and make sure the background color is also pink we're going to do that a little bit later but since we're doing just a single background I think choose the share color as black that means for the first colour in the palette is going to be black and we can use that colour within the image too. So that's going to make us, it's going to give us um, 61 colours rather than just 60 so we get like a bonus colour there. For the differing options I think since we're using a single image I think we should uh, enable this rather than disable it. I'm not entirely sure what the um, slow and fast does. I know for dither weight I think the lower the number the less differing the higher the more differing as I understand it but feel free to experiment with this yourself and also with the dither pattern too. And when you're ready simply press the quantize button and you'll see here hit generating in real time. With the fractions per pixel set at 0.1 this is pretty quick 
if you set it higher it takes a bit longer but not too long just a few minutes not a few hours or anything so again feel free to experiment with that and you can see on the right hand side the palettes being generated so there's four palettes of 16 colors but of course the first color is the black that we designated that's going to be the far background color of the screen and once that quantized bar reaches the very end it means that the image is, is done is created all you have to do now is literally click on the image itself and it will download it into your downloads folder The file it produces actually can be imported directly into SGDK as is, but let's take a closer look at it within ASPRAT. You can see that the color mode is already set to index and don't touch this, leave it index, don't change it to RGB or anything else. And if we take a closer look at the image, we can say, see that although it's overall is very, very good, there are some aspects, for example, around the eyes where it doesn't look too great. You can see the uh, differences between the different palettes quite obviously between where one tile ends and the other begins on the left hand side you can also really see the palette we've got four rows here four rows of 16 colors with black as the first color in each row don't worry about the rest of the black colors that comes after it just leave those as they are and what's happening here is each single tile eight by eight tile has one palette allocated to it so uh, if you look here we have like pal zero then pal one PAL2 and PAL3 so we're using all four Mega Drive palettes in one single image. I'm going to open up a grid on the image itself so this is a grid within a sprite it doesn't affect the actual file itself so we can do 8x8 eight eight. and you can see more clearly here where each um, tile the uh, demarcation points of each tile and you can see especially around the eyes here there's a, a quite an ugly effect where you can see the the pink and the white doesn't quite go together so let's try and fix that before we go on and put this into SGDK. Within a sprite if you hold the alt uh, button on your keyboard and left click the different pixels you can see on the left hand side where the palette is you'll see uh, which color goes with which index and if you click within a, any kind of square any grid square 8 by 8 grid square you'll notice that all the colors used in that square are from the same palette and make sure you don't mix these up don't use colors from two different uh, lines from two different palettes within the same square because that will create an error if you want to do something like that you would need to create two uh, maybe background images laid on top of each other if i were to save what i'm doing here this little kind of lilac color then it would definitely create an error because that will be two uh, colors from different palettes within the same tile let me quickly fast forward and just make every single color within each palette the same color so we're gonna have four different colors and i think this will make it a bit more obvious if it's not clear already just exactly what's happening here with the palettes and as the image takes shape you'll see very clearly that each how each tile has its own palette allocated to it and there's no mixing between the palettes with everything back to normal let's take a look at the little eye situation we got here now i think most images will require some manual touching up for an artist so however you choose to deal with this is up to you now what of course you have to be careful is just make sure that any one tile just uses a single palette so look at what colors are in each palette and you can see there's occasionally you get more like duplicate colors in the same palette or duplicate colors around and you might be able to change this so are we really using this um can we change this to a white or to a pink color so i think we probably want to change the pink to a white color so if we were to simply change that pink to a white color where else is it used in the image would it create any problems so let's go ahead and do that and see how it works out actually before we do sometimes it's a good idea to change that color to like a really bright color different from the rest of the image just to see in which areas it's being used so if we change it to this yellow color you can see pretty obviously all the parts where this pink color is being used so i think we can actually change that to white and i think it probably look fine it's not being used in any awkward places so let's go ahead and let's see the final result so with that pink color changed to white within that palette i think the eyes are looking a lot better now the thumb where the other with that pink also appeared looked okay i think the only problem is maybe this square here it looks a bit too squarey the um between the pink and the white is a bit too sharp i think there should be maybe a bit of differing there so as long as we keep remember every as i keep emphasizing again and again you keep one tile per palette we can maybe add a bit of pink or white to either of the two squares we can blend them in a bit and then i think it'll look fine Once you're satisfied, simply save the file again, and now we'll go ahead and we put it into SGDK. We're pretty much going to be continuing where we left off in the last lesson when we did the palette fading. 
even though we're not going to use a lot of these assets here I've just left them in anyway so uh, don't worry about deleting them well what I have changed is the background image so now the background image is using our um, Sonic Adventure image that we created using that little tool note here that we're using the BMP file so if you want you can convert it to a PNG but actually SGDK uses BMP just fine and that is what is produced by the program we used if we now switch to the main.c you'll see that I've um, left a lot of the stuff with to do with the camera still in so uh, don't worry about that just leave these here there's no need to delete them same with the uh, the map and the so on so uh, just leave it as it is but what I have commented out is the creating the map and scrolling the map and adding the enemy sprites and I've also um, disabled the handle input and the camera functions now our program simply sets all the colors to black, it copies the um, palette information to the array. I'm going to leave the init initialization of the sprite engine in because we're going to use that later. Then we can draw the background image with, with, we're using the sonic background and finally we fade in the palette. If we go ahead and we save and compile that, we'll end up with this image. Considering how little time it took for us to produce this image to convert it to the Mega Drive, I think it's a, a very nice result. So hats off to the creator of the program. Needless to say, it's a very, very nice tool and I hope you'll give it a try on your own project sometime. Speaking of projects, I'm sure a lot of people were wondering whether or not I could use this in my Symphony of the Night project. So obviously that's a very a difficult uh, project where we have to take the graphics, the high color graphics, and we have to reduce them to the Mega Drive spec. But as you can see here by my attempt, it wasn't very successful. It doesn't really do, I think, a great job in terms of uh, level graphics. So here I've got two palettes of 16 colors because of course in Symphony of the Night, we, we also have um, added cards palette and we also have the enemy palette too. So really giving this two whole palettes is being very generous because we'll probably want like a separate background too but even when doing that you can see that um, it's a little bit washed out it's definitely something yes it's although it's, the tool is very good for I think just still images for actual level graphics I don't think it'll be very useful for for Pyron when he does his work so I think these are the type of things that really need to be handcrafted I don't think the tool can help out here Matt B here gave a really good demonstration of what a tool is good at when he converted this, I think it's a Transformers cartoon to a Mega Drive FM feed so using the tool we just covered. So up to 61 colors each frame, although as he said, sometimes it's 20 plus colors in one frame depending on how it allocates the palettes. But I think this looks really fantastic. It looks really great. Of course, it'll blow you away to see a kind of FM feed on the Mega Drive back then, but the cartridge size uh, limitations made it impossible. Um, I'm sure something like this could probably be done on the Mega CD instead, but as a demo, I think this looks really great. So just to give you a bit of inspiration, an idea of what can be achieved with this fantastic tool. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.